In Gran Turismo form, BMW's 3 Series offers 5-door hatchback versatility and much more rear seat space, along with a more unique look and a slightly raised crossover style feel. The extra height and weight these changes bring create a different kind of drive, but families probably won't mind. This, after all, is the most practical compact model the Munich maker has ever bought us. So, let me make sure I've understood this correctly. You like the idea of a BMW 3 Series saloon, but it's not big enough in the boot. You like the idea of a 3 Series touring estate, but it's not roomy enough for those at the rear. And you like the idea of a 3 Series based X1 crossover model, but it's not sharp enough to drive. Well, at least we've established that you want a 3 Series, probably this one, the 3 Series Gran Turismo. A 3 Series with a hatchback then, and an example of the breed launched here in the summer of 2013 that at last will be fine for families, provided they can afford it. A BMW with the higher stance and commanding driving position of a small crossover, but one you can still enjoy driving, and a compact car that doesn't feel like one when you stretch out inside it. Such is the rationale behind this, Munich's smallest Gran Turismo model. A bit of a niche product? Yes, but one you could see appealing to plenty of people. Packaged up neatly here are attributes that BMW claimed to have carefully pitched to suit the Qashqai crowd, the station wagon set, and people for whom perfection is a compact executive saloon. A car for all seasons and all reasons then, or a compromise best forgotten. We're going to find out. So just how will this GT drive? It's hard to think of any car ever sold whose driving dynamics were improved by making it longer, higher and heavier. So there's reasonable scope to fear that the traditionally magnificent 3 Series driving dynamics may have been irrevocably corrupted here by a higher centre of gravity. You sit as high up as you would in BMW's X1 SUV. And a 145 kilogram weight penalty over the saloon model. In the event, I don't think the men from Munich have done too badly. Crucially, at the wheel of this thing, you still know that you're driving a 3 Series, just a rather different one. Let's start with what you don't get. The cornering turn-in isn't as sharp, and as you'd expect with the higher ride height, there's a bit more roll through the corners. The motoring press, who demand their 3 Series models to be razor sharp in response, didn't like this at all, but let's bear in mind that this is a 3 Series for families, not Fernando Alonso. In any case, BMW has clearly worked very hard to try and limit the downsides to this design, even going as far as fitting wider tyres on the back to try and maintain a neutral handling balance. And they've engineered this car to accept the option of X-Drive four-wheel drive for extra wet weather and cornering traction, though at launch you could only specify this option on the petrol 320i. And the ride? A car badged Gran Turismo suggests itself to be able to cover long distances in magic carpet luxury. On paper, this one is hampered from the start, with extra weight that requires more roll stiffness in the chassis that, in turn, ought to make bump absorption more abrupt. In the event, I haven't found it to be too bad, but that may be because this car's been fitted with the optional M Sport Adaptive Damping System, which, in its standard mode, is able to give a real suppleness to the ride, particularly over poor services. Switch it to sport though, and you feel every ridge and crack in the road. Overall though, if I were a potential buyer of this car, I'd want to tick the box for this setup. In a way, it's a similar story with the steering. The standard Servotronic electrically assisted setup is certainly accurate, but it doesn't have the driver feedback you'd expect a 3 Series to be able to give you. Or at least it doesn't in its standard form. A small extra outlay gets you the variable ratio sport steering setup that I'm trying here. Tick the box for that too. 
And while we're ticking boxes, what about considering the one for the eight-speed automatic gearbox, which for me seems to better fit with the whole Gran Turismo ethos better than the standard six-speed manual. If you really want to be sporty, you can order it with a set of steering wheel mounted paddles. On to engines, which as expected are exactly the same as those offered on conventional 3 Series models. Most customers will want the 2 litre diesel engine offered in 143, 184 and 218 brake horsepower states of tune in the respective 318D, 320D and 325D models on offer. And to give you some idea of the performance available, even the base 318D that I'm trying here manages the 0 to 62 mile an hour sprint in 9.7 seconds on the way to 130 miles an hour, while the 320D improves those figures to 8 seconds dead and 143 miles an hour. With 380 newton meters of torque on tap, that car feels really responsive. To go faster, you'll need petrol power. Again, the emphasis is on a single two litre engine offered in different guises. The 184 brake horsepower 320i manages 62 miles an hour from rest in 7.9 seconds, while the 245 brake horsepower 328i improves that to uh, 6.1 seconds and has to be artificially restrained at 155 miles an hour. Now, I can't really see why you'd want to go faster than that in this car, but for those likely to be seduced by six cylinder power, there's a thirsty twin turbo 3 litre 335i model at the top of the range. With uh, 306 brake horsepower on tap, this delivers the 62 mile an hour sprint in 5.7 seconds. All these figures are based on setting up your car in its fastest form, selectable through the Sport and Sport Plus modes on the standard drive performance control system that you operate via this centre console rocker switch. This is able to tweak steering feel, throttle response, stability control intervention and, if you have an auto gearbox, gear shift changes. All these criteria based on your own personal preference. Go for the M Sport adaptive damping and the ride can be adjusted in the same way. If pressing on isn't a priority, you'll just leave it in comfort mode or better still, in the Eco Pro setting which optimizes all of the vehicle systems towards maximum efficiency. As usual with any niche product, there are plenty of people who don't get the point. And most of them have come out of the woodwork and said so in the reviews I've read of this car so far. Personally, I can't see that the concept behind it is so very difficult to understand. I've got a family with three children and I'd like the idea of a compact rear-driven BMW if I could find one that was spacious and versatile enough. Here at last is that car. Here too is a Gran Turismo BMW model you could actually call stylish. If you would say that of the originator of this line, the 5 Series Gran Turismo with its awkwardly bloated body. In this case, the extra size necessary to create this car has been more artfully accommodated into a shape that has as much SUV and MPV-ness about it as it does conventional family hatch. In other words, this GT has a bit more about it than your local sales reps Mondeo or Insignia, just as it should have for the money being asked. The arcing silhouette and elongated tail see it sitting 81 millimeters taller than an ordinary three series. And of course, it's longer even than a touring estate. At the front, subtle changes offer a slightly different visual signature the forward slanting kidney grille, the reshaped headlamps, the more smoothly contoured bonnet, and the so-called blades set into the outer air intakes of the front apron. Moving back, you come across lovely boomerang-shaped air breathers behind each front wheel arch. They have a purpose, drag reduction, but I wouldn't really care if they didn't. A car of this kind needs styling trinketry. Like the first active rear spoiler ever fitted to a BMW? Follow the double shoulder lines back and the coupe style roof line sweeps down into it. An intricate touch to a tail section completed by the customary L-shaped tail lamps that blend around the corners of the car. 
Overall, it's a very nice piece of penmanship, but is it also a practical one? Well, while we're here at the back, let's have a look. So heavy is this tailgate that BMW has had to standardise electric operation across the Gran Turismo range. With the option of remote operation, you can instigate uh, by waving your foot beneath the bumper if you arrive here with key in pocket but hands full of packages. Once raised, the hatch reveals a commodious 520 litre space. That's 25 litres more than you get in the 3 Series Touring and more too than you get in most comparable crossover and small SUV models. My only slight reservation is that the cargo area floor does sit up rather high. It's nearly three feet off the ground, which can make uh, getting heavier items in a bit more difficult and which would require a bit of a leap from an old dog. It's nicely trimmed though with this stainless steel lip trim and these useful alloy runner channels onto which you can clip boot dividing accessories. There are lashing points, a useful panel hook, a 12 volt socket and a deep compartment in the left hand side panel for swallowing up smaller items. There's also a multi-function storage tray under the floor, and that's the place where you can also uh, neatly store the two-piece rear parcel shelf when it's not in use. And if you need more space, well, of course, you can flatten the 40-20-40 split folding rear backrest. But before you do, bear in mind its adjustable reclinability. Pushing its angle forward and uh, it'll go right the way almost to a vertical position could be just enough to help you get that pesky chest of drawers in while still being able to take passengers on the back seat. When you do finally push forward these rear chairs it's a bit disappointing that because the backrest merely flops down onto the seat base they don't fold completely flat. They do, however, extend total carriage capacity to 1,600 litres, 100 litres more than a 3 Series Touring. So much for the packages. What about provision for people? Well, this is where the critics who simply dismiss this as a 3 Series with a hatch have failed to do their homework. BMW has done more than just shove in a slanting tailgate here, redesigning the floor plan of this car around a wheelbase 110 millimeters longer than that of the saloon and nearly all of it benefits rear seat occupants. Now I'll make no bones about this I feel cramped in the back of a, an ordinary 3 series. Here it's very different with proper space for three and leg and headroom to spare even if you happen to be stuck in this centre perch with feet astride the transmission tunnel. I think it's roomier than a 5 Series back here which I suppose isn't surprising given a wheelbase similar to that of BMW's huge X5 luxury SUV. Of course the overriding feeling of comfort is helped by that reclining backrest adjustable through 15 stages and 19 degrees. There's an airy feeling to the cabin too, even if you don't specify this expensive panoramic glass sunroof with plenty of light from the frameless windows. Take a seat up front, and another reason why the back seat experience is so pleasant dawns upon you. All the seats in this car have been raised by 59 millimetres to give everyone a better view out and it's something you especially notice behind the wheel where in a GT you oversee the controls rather than sitting snugly around them. Perhaps this change is all the more obvious because there are no other differences over an ordinary 3 Series. Not that they needed to be. The dashboard remains a model of driver-focused clarity with crystal clear circular instruments, a freestanding iDrive monitor and the iDrive infotainment system controller within easy reach on the centre console. You'll pay a £1,300 premium over the cost of 
the 3 Series Touring Estate if you want to own this 3 Series Gran Turismo model, which means asking prices that largely lie in the 30 to 40,000 pound bracket. At the foot of the lineup, there's a 1,000 pound premium to graduate from the petrol 320i to the 318d I've got here. Personally though, I'd want to find another couple of thousand or so to graduate to mid-range level, where the choice is between a diesel 320d, priced at around a thousand pound less than a petrol 320i. You seem to get more performance by selecting the petrol option, but you get less torque, less pulling power. So in the real world, you'll probably get places quicker in the diesel versions. It'll be hard to justify stretching to the only six cylinder Gran Turismo model, the twin turbo petrol 335i. For a £6,500 premium, it gets you to 62 miles an hour less than half a second quicker than the 328i variant. The other models, well, they all have something to be said for them, and whichever you go for, it's worth finding another £1,500 to add the eight-speed automatic gearbox. It suits the character of the car. If you want the extra peace of mind of X-Drive four-wheel drive, you'll need the 320i petrol variant. For this, there's a £1,500 premium over the equivalent two-wheel drive model. As for rivals, well, there isn't another car on the market exactly like this one. Audi's A5 Sportback is the obvious rival to put against it, and the model whose success probably prompted BMW to design this car in the first place, proving as it did that a significant number of buyers in the compact executive saloon sector really did want five-door versatility after all. The Audi lacks not only this BMW's uh, rear-wheel drive layout, but also its slightly elevated ride height, and hence that slight whiff of crossover appeal that the Munich men like to think this car has. Given that buyers are being asked to find a premium of around two to three thousand pounds over not only the A5 Sportback, but also a whole clutch of RAV4 and Freelander style compact SUV soft rotors that sell from about the £25,000 mark, this car needs all the advantages it can get, real or imagined. It'll certainly help that for once with BMW, even base versions are very well equipped. Across the range, you can expect to find smart 18-inch alloy wheels, front fog lamps, an electrically powered tailgate, auto headlamps and wipers, a chrome-finished tailpipe, a run-flat tyres, a Thatcham Category 1 alarm, a two-piece rear parcel shelf, rear parking sensors, an active rear spoiler, two-zone automatic air conditioning, keyless starting, a multifunction leather three-spoke steering wheel, an auto-dimming rear-view mirror, and Bluetooth phone compatibility. You also get cruise control, an onboard computer for trip and temperature information, the iDrive infotainment setup, a six speaker BMW professional radio with 6.5 inch color screen, plus DAB digital radio and a USB port. Oh, and the drive performance control system via which you can change steering feel or throttle response via up to four different modes. Safety kit runs to the usual twin front side and curtain airbags, plus the usual electronic assistance for stability and traction control, as well as an ABS system with brake pre-tensioning for emergency stops, brake drying to keep the discs primed and ready in wet weather, DBC dynamic brake control and CBC cornering brake control. There's also a tyre puncture warning system, Isofix child seat fastenings, a start-off assistant to help you moving off on steep junctions, and an electronic limited slip function for the rear differential to help you get the power down through tight corners. If you want to go further than that, you can pay extra for features like a head-up display that projects key information onto the bottom of the windscreen. A lane change warning system that'll stop you from dangerously overtaking when there's another driver in your blind spot and a lane departure warning setup that'll stop dozy drivers from veering out of their lanes on the highway. And other options? Well, this car has plenty of them. Leather upholstery and brushed aluminium trim to lift the cabin, a huge panoramic glass sunroof, adaptive xenon headlamps that follow the road and dip themselves at night, and a media package that gives you sat-nav, real-time traffic updates, and emergency services that'll help in a breakdown or an accident.
Crucially, it also has the two dynamic features I'd recommend you consider, variable sport steering and adaptive M Sport suspension. So you can set up the ride to suit the mood that you're in and the road that you're on. Once you've swallowed the upfront asking price, then you should find this 3 Series Gran Turismo very cost effective to run. Thanks for this can be given to BMW's suite of efficient dynamics tweaks, which include all the usual features. So I'm talking brake energy regeneration, low rolling resistance tires, efficient servotronic electric power steering, and a stop start system to cut the engine when you don't need it stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. Plus, this GT model's active rear spoiler also plays its part, as does the efficiency-orientated Eco Pro setting in the drive performance control system. This car is even clever enough to use uh, SatNav data to operate its ancillaries as efficiently as possible. As a result, the diesel models in particular can return some exemplary figures. This 318D, for example, uh, manages 62.8 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and a CO2 reading of 119 grams per kilometre. Go for the Pokia 320D variant and those figures fall only marginally to 57.7 miles to the gallon and 129 grams per kilometre. Not bad for a car that gets to 62 miles an hour in 8 seconds dead on the way to 143 miles an hour. Petrol people, of course, will need to set their sights a little lower, but both 320i and 328i variants still manage around 43 miles to the gallon and a CO2 reading of only just over 150 grams per kilometre. You'll need deep pockets to run the twin-turbo six-cylinder 335i petrol model, though. Here, the figures fall to 34.9 miles to the gallon and 188 grams per kilometre. What else? Uh, insurance groupings? Well, they range between 24 and 38. And residual values should be strong if they replicate the figures achieved by more conventional 3 Series models. And ongoing running costs can be kept down if you opt for a service inclusive plus package that, in one hit, can cover all of your service and maintenance costs for five years or 50,000 miles. You can see why BMW had to build this car. With Audi proving the need for a five-door body shape in the compact executive segment and key markets like China and the USA proving distinctly lukewarm to estates, a hatchback 3 Series seemed the obvious answer. In contrast to its Ingolstadt rival though, BMW has gone further than simply adding a rear hatch to its existing saloon model. It's tried to do something a bit cleverer than that. Raising the ride height and giving the car a more commanding crossover type feel has given this design wider appeal without too many dynamic downsides. Those who object to the slightly vaguer feel probably shouldn't be buying this model anyway. It is, after all, supposed to be the 3 Series for families. Ultimately, it all depends what you want. I wasn't totally sold on BMW's Gran Turismo concept in 5 Series form, but I'm rather more convinced this time round. It may not be the ultimate driving machine, but then it doesn't have to be. In terms of versatility, it's the ultimate 3 Series. For many, that'll be all that matters.